You're listening to season two of By Shawnita, wholeness series novel, Weighing My Options, chapter five. Brianna's eyes opened before her alarm sounded. La Unique was death, placed a slight damper on her trip home, even though several emails stating it would not make her cousin happy in heaven if they all made shoe prints on their bottom lips. Her smiles didn't come as frequent when she imagined how the trip would be, since a funeral occupied the quote-unquote big finale space. Thomas's mood matched Brianna's. His snores were deeper than that of a man preparing for a quick road trip home. He slept as if he had nowhere to drive. An elbow to nudge her husband suspended in air as his work phone rang. His arm eased off the bed and retrieved the shrill intruder from his nightstand, Owens. Brianna recognized the ringtone. Knots filled her stomach. With every silent second, her toes drew in tighter. No one made happy phone calls before six in the morning. Bree baby. Her husband's smooth baritone sounded deeper in the mornings. Despite her weight gain, he still loved being intimate with her. Anytime she heard his pre-dawn voice, it made parts of her quiver. Yes, Thomas? Her voice had less huskiness. Her husband sat straight up in bed. You heard? Brianna closed her eyes. This part could be a bad dream. The alarm would sound any moment to wake her. A sigh stumbled across her lips. I heard. Thomas wrapped an arm around her midsection. He kissed her cheek. Brianna blinked. If I could change this part of my job, I would. You know I can't. Brianna blinked again. Don't do this to me, Brianna. If I'm able, I'll make it in for your cousin's funeral. If not, I'll make it up to you when you get home. Thomas nibbled her ear. Brianna sighed. You're the best part of my day. I'm going to miss you all weekend. Thomas pulled in closer to Brianna. I'll miss you too. Brianna wrapped her leg around his closest to her. Little bit is going to be so disappointed she can't go. Cool as she is, I know her mom won't let her go with you. Thomas rested his head on the side of Brianna's forehead. We'll have to go up for the next holiday. Brianna nodded. Please talk to me, Bree. She'll like that, Thomas. Brianna patted her husband's arm. I need to get up and get moving. You're only going a few hours over. Thomas Thomas kissed his wife's neck. I need to show you something before you go. Brianna giggled. I'm sure I've seen that before, sir. I need to get a move on. Thomas eased onto his side. Oh, I've got your moves right here. Hours later, Brianna glowed with the memory of her travel delay. It didn't matter he missed her reunion. Part of her wanted him to stay home to avoid the pity in his eyes when her relatives asked about their missing children. Something had to be wrong with her other than her weight. Fluffy people, as she liked to call them, had children all of the time. The drive from Alabama to Atlanta proved less eventful than her morning. She arrived to the hotel too early to check in. The concierge assured her a call once her suite became clean. Tired of waiting around, Brianna walked to the mall for a bite to eat. The quick stroll to the mall several blocks revealed a scenic route to the site of the cookout being held at a new outdoor event facility in an area the city wanted to rebrand. Changes to the Atlanta landscape and neighborhoods were obvious on every street. Empty lots, housed parking decks, high rises, and condominiums. Everything about her home, away from home, seemed new and different. She hoped to take some of that back to Alabama with her. Her cell phone beeped. The text message from the hotel notified her of her room's availability. A nap sounded like the right thing to do, until the festivities of the day began. Visiting her family crossed her mind. She preferred to get the embarrassment of being barren over in one big dose. Some time at the spa in a nap sounded like just what she needed to relax a bit more before her reunion. Nothing relaxed her like Thomas, but even his skills wore off a little after several hours in a car.
Your brother is trying to pawn those kids off on us tonight. Don't cave in and let him drop them off in here, Julie, or you will be watching them by yourself all weekend. Her dad shook his head. I don't know why he doesn't think he has to raise his own kids. I did it. Julie rolled her eyes and shifted in her seat. The ride from Indiana to Atlanta was not as long as it felt. Her father's speech would have been easier to digest if she hadn't been the one he pawned her younger brother and sister off on while she was in high school. His grief over her mother's death almost killed him. He had no idea how funny his rant was to her. Yes, Dad, I won't be able to watch them and get my party on. No need to worry. He can play family man for one weekend. Julie closed her eyes and drifted back off to sleep. Crickets greeted her as the crust from her eyes crumbled under her plump knuckles. The hotel towered over them. Her brother smiled at her as she found her balance on the concrete. Binge drinking with her boyfriend the night before may not have been the best decision. The common correction for a hangover is a bad idea when you have to take the wheel. Auntie Julie, C3, and Yana need you. Her brother strolled over, leaving his current girlfriend standing next to the car, picking dirt from her fingernails. Julie locked eyes with her dad. I'm not feeling well. I need a nap. Talk to me after the picnic. Maybe I'll stop by your room and read them a story before I go to bed. Her dad smiled. Okay, Julie, appreciate you. CJ kissed his girl on the cheek. She rolled her eyes. Come on, kids. Julie smiled at the new girl. It didn't make sense for her to learn her name unless she became pregnant. Otherwise, she wouldn't be around longer than this weekend. It was obvious CJ wanted Julie to keep his kids, but that would just raise the likelihood of another niece or nephew. Julie is not trying to be on naughty duty this weekend, CJ. She didn't make those babies. You keep them. Caitlin winked at Julie. Good night, y'all. Julie moved toward the sliding doors of the hotel. Julie shielded her eyes and bumped into the back of someone in front of her. Excuse me, ma'am. The woman turned around and grabbed Julie into a tight embrace. Her perfume mixed with the headache and jostled the remains of whatever remained in her stomach. Julie patted the woman and tried to pull back. Oh my goodness, it is you. It really is you. I haven't seen you since you moved with your mom and Uncle Chris. The tall woman towered over her and the sun blocked her face out. I have a bit of a headache. Can we continue this greeting card moment in the lobby? Julie continued into the hotel. Her eyes adjusted and she took in the entire woman who lumbered toward her. It shouldn't have made her feel relief that one of her cousins gained as much, if not more weight than her. Brianna? Brianna nodded so fast, it made Julie dizzy. Is that Caitlin and Chris Jr. checking in over there with... Is that Uncle Chris? Julie read the concern on Brianna's face. It never impacted her how much her father aged since her mother passed, unless someone else mentioned it. He looked the same for the last five years. It was the beauty regimen of grief and vast amounts of hard liquor. That's them. Have you heard about La Uniqua? Brianna sighed. Yeah, it was weird. One day I'm looking forward to seeing her and the next she is gone. Tony is gonna freak. They were really close. Julie nodded at her dad. Triple Triangle just updated her book time account showing that she landed at the airport. She could be in her room already. Brianna followed Julie's line of vision. I'll send her a private book time message telling her we'll see her at the picnic. See you there. Tell everyone I said hi. Brianna squeezed Julie again and glided off to the elevator. Julie sighed. Older, taller, and heavier, but still the same gorgeous Brianna. Some girls had all the luck. Nothing a quick stop at the hotel lobby bar couldn't fix with a quick brew before she settled into her nap. Best fix for a hangover just happened to be her favorite fix for everything. No need to stress, happy hour was never far away. Refreshed from her massage and nap, Brianna drove over to the reunion site. Droves of people walked around outside. Several faces looked familiar, despite being attached to larger bodies. Relief poured over her as she realized time added horizontal growth to more than a few of her family members. 
To her dismay, most of the women her age and younger had children to accompany their extra weight. Brianna's hand touched her forsaken womb. A knock on the window startled Brianna. You planning on getting out of that slick ride anytime soon? Brianna looked up into a pair of cloudy green eyes. Julie? Julie turned around and looked behind her. Unless you're seeing dead people, yeah, it's me. Brianna shook her head. My bad. Tacky joke. It hasn't hit me yet that La Unico is gone. Julie shook her head. First drink is on me. Girl, I know how you are. It's all good. I'm fine. I'm sure you're not the only one still in shock. Brianna opened her car door. Julie stepped back. I was beginning to wonder if I had bad breath. Come here and give me a hug, Mrs. Rich. Brianna chuckled, you in that mouth of yours. Julie opened her arms. The cousins shared a long embrace. Wow, it has to have been almost 10 years since I've seen you. Yep, that is about right. You haven't changed much. Brianna cleared her throat. Have we made it to the lion part of the conversation already? Wow, that is a record. Julie chuckled. You look the same too, girl. Brianna rolled her eyes at Julie. Let's go find everybody. You mean Tony? There is nothing worse than having somewhere to go and nothing in your closet you want to wear. Tony looked at herself in the mirror as if she expected the reflection to respond. Two weeks of clothes no one in Atlanta had ever seen her wear were not enough options. Her slimming undergarments cut lines into every crease, crevice, and crack without showing through even thin summer material. Miracles could be bought. Tony laughed at her own joke. Her smartphone alarm sounded. Picnic started almost an hour ago. She needed to make her way to the grounds or risk missing seeing everyone and getting a good plate of food before the greedy and flies ruined everything. Her obesity was still obvious. A grunt caught in her throat. While working miracles, her full body girdle couldn't make her extra weight disappear. She'd have to settle for shifting it around to more flattering positions. $300 well spent if it meant holding her head a little higher while she warded off the questions from her family and friends. 20 minutes later, Tony swished and squeaked her way onto the picnic ground. Those independent slimming consultants failed to inform her about how loud her new miracle material sounded when walking. Heads at countless tables on opposite sides of the picnic grounds turned as Tony walked toward food tables. She smiled at people eating in silence under a tree. Family reunions should be one big feast with no talking aloud. The thought made Tony smile. A yelp from her right took Tony back to the final year of high school. No one else in the world made that sound save for the pricely colored popularity princess Brie Anna. Woman made mean girls apologize for nerds to stay in her good graces and on the in crowd party list. Charm oozed from her pores. Curiosity about her perfect cousin's number of kids and fine husband won out over the growling in Tony's stomach. She wouldn't be able to fit anything into her stomach tight as her cranks were around her midsection. Look what the wind blew in! Brianna lumbered over to Tony. The small bit of breath in Tony's body betrayed her and left without calling in reinforcement. She blinked her eyes. It had to be a bad dream. Brianna Price was not standing before her. Brianna? Who else could make Fluffy look this good? Don't stand there posing for a portrait. Give me a hug. Brianna pulled Tony into her arm. A white, pear-shaped woman walked toward them carrying a beer and plate with one hand. Tony Locks looking good, girl. Thanks. Tony stared at the short woman. She looked back to Brianna. That is just cold-blooded. You don't know your own family. The short white woman shook her head. See, if I'd stayed and helped you through AP English, you wouldn't have this problem. A girl has to move with her parents. Julie? Disbelief and confusion registered on Tony's face. An eye roll perfected years ago led the way for a wry smile. You were always so good with numbers. That is very good. Now you got two names in a row. Don't go hurting yourself the rest of the weekend. Tony swatted at her cousin. She bent down and gave her a brief hug and peck on the cheek. A girl needs a plate if she's going to get harassed like Julie and Brianna led her to the buffet area. 
they made small talk until interference from a microphone. The hairs on the back of Tony's neck stand up. Sorry about that. Please bring your plates and families into the mezzanine as we wrap up today's event with a special presentation. Tony sighed. La Unique tribute. Didn't seem fair her younger cousin was gone so Can you guys believe La Uniqua is gone? Brianna followed the people walking toward the covered structure in the middle of the picnic grounds. Tony shook her head. It is a shame it took something like this to get us back together. Miss you guys. Julie took a long sip from her new bottle of beer. Tony nodded. Thoughts of the last reunion she attended with Raj settled into the back of her mind. According to his timeline, she'd be on baby number three and they would be living like royalty in Houston. Instead, his only child lived in Chicago with his chick on the side. A cousin from her old church waved, let me grab some dessert. Brianna and Julie stopped walking. They waited for her in the middle of the people descending on the building. Light from a record. Tony joined her cousins and spilled small servings of banana pudding into her mouth to keep from crying or screaming as several of the cousins who lived in Atlanta pointed at her and whispered. You haven't been back since the scandal broke out with your old pastor? Brianna put her arm around Tony's shoulder. Tony shook her head no. Julie looked around. Don't let these people get to you, Tony. Family doesn't judge. The ones talking are just relatives. Tony nodded. Tears threatened to spill, but she stuffed them down with the last spoonful of pudding. It wouldn't be so bad if it weren't such a big mess. It dominated national news for three days, and I think they were still doing follow-up stories on it when I moved to North Carolina. We don't have to stay. We can all go back to my suite. We'll tell everyone you were missing La Uniqua. Brianna rubbed Tony's arm. No, I want to be here for this. I loved her like a younger sister. Tony sighed. <sighs> if someone says anything stupid, I'll just sit on them. Julie chuckled. Nah, you know we can't let you do that. Alone, we'll all sit on them. Tony smiled. Let's get through this and then go to your suite, Brianna. Wait. Won't Thomas want to be alone with his Brie baby? He had to stay home for a work emergency. No worries. Brianna smiled. You know how we used to do it. Slumber party in my room tonight. Tomorrow we can come to your room, Julie. Nah, I'm sharing with my dad. How about two nights of yours and close it out in Tony's? Julie finished off her beer. We have to stay for the dance competition and go by the elders table. Brianna ticked things they had to do off on her hand. Julie rolled her eyes. Fine. After we do all that, we'll meet up in your room. What is that going to be like around 10 or 11 tonight? Brianna looked at her watch. She shrugged. Sounds about right. Tony breathed a sigh of relief. Ain't no party like a Price Girls party. Let's do it. I hope you enjoyed Weighing My Options, Chapter 5, written in red by me, Shawnita. Please tell your friends about the podcast and join us next week for Chapter 6.